Neil Dovestone. On December the 11th of 2015, an elderly man walked into the Clarence pub in Greenfield, England. He asked for the quickest route to walk to the top of the mountain, even though he wasn't dressed for such a trip. The following day, his body was found at the top of nearby Salworth Moor. He had died from taking strychnine. The man had 130 pounds and some train tickets in his pockets, which showed that he had traveled 320 kilometers from London. However, he had no identification. Since he was last seen near the Dovestone Reservoir, he was named Neil Dovestone. The biggest clue in his possession was an empty bottle of tyroxine sodium, a specific batch which was only manufactured and distributed in Pakistan. Yet this lead has not helped investigators uncover the identity of Neil Dovestone. The Teardrop Rapist For two decades, Los Angeles has been terrorized by a Latino sexual predator believed to be responsible for at least 39 sexual assaults. Since the victims described seeing a teardrop tattoo near his left eye, he was dubbed Teardrop Rapist. His first known assault occurred in 1995, but after a six-year period of inactivity from 2005 to 2010, DNA evidence linked him to three more attacks between 2011 and 2013. Sadly, an innocent man wound up serving time in prison for some of the Teardrop Rapist's crimes. In 1999, Louis Lorenzo Vargas received a life sentence for three sexual assaults but always maintained his innocence. In November 2015, DNA testing proved that one of Vargas's alleged assaults was committed by the teardrop rapist. Vargas had his conviction overturned and was released from prison. As for the teardrop rapist, he still remains unidentified. Bo Weevil Jackson it's amazing to think a musician could appear out of nowhere, record two albums, and then just vanish. But such a thing occurred in 1926. That year, Paramount Records released a blues album featuring songs by an African-American blues singer and guitarist named Bo Weevil Jackson. Shortly thereafter, Vocalion Records released another blues album with songs by the same man. Only this time, he used the name Sam Butler. This is the last time that anyone ever heard from him. Paramount's publicity material stated that Jackson was from the Carolinas, but the legend goes that he was discovered performing for tips on a street in Birmingham, Alabama, and brought to Chicago to record the albums. In total, Jackson recorded 13 tracks, and blues historians have praised his musical abilities. Unfortunately, no other documentation for him seems to exist, so his true identity remains unknown. The Wheaton Bandit Starting in January 2002, a masked man carrying a semi-automatic handgun committed a series of armed robberies at banks in Wheaton, Illinois, a suburban city located outside of Chicago. The perpetrator hit seven banks in the community and was nicknamed the Wheaton Bandit. He eventually expanded to robbing suburban banks in surrounding towns like Glen Ellen and Winfield. In total, the Wheaton Bandit robbed 16 banks and credit unions and got away with over $100,000. His last known robbery occurred on December the 7th of 2006 before he abruptly stopped. Even though a $50,000 reward was offered for the Bandit's capture, the five-year statute of limitations has since run out, so he can no longer be charged for any of his robberies. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Until tomorrow, goodbye.